Every summer, this string of pearls plant sits outside on a porch, enjoying near-ideal growing conditions. But as the days grow shorter and the temperature drops, this plant will only survive if brought indoors. Though we may not see it, there's a lot going on inside this plant that helps it adjust to its new winter home. And as it turns out, the more precisely we understand the mechanisms regulating a plant's response to changing environmental stimuli, the better we'll be able to help farmers maximize their yields and more successfully adapt in a climate-stressed world. And the better we'll be able to understand human health as well. Plants are really interesting creatures because they have to process their environmental information and make use of it in how they will adapt and how their seed will be pre-adapted to an environment. Sally McKenzie is a professor of biology and of plant science at Penn State, Huck Chair of Functional Genomics and Director of the Penn State Plant Institute. You know, a plant makes a decision every day. Do I hunker down and deal with the stress or do I spread out my leaves and grow as fast as I can to outcompete my neighbors? Mackenzie works in the rapidly growing field of epigenetics and has pioneered an entirely new way of manipulating plants to improve their resilience and yield. When most people think of epigenetics, they think about the way genes are expressed. But more recently, it's become clear that there's another feature of epigenetics, and that is it isn't just the way genes are expressed, but the way that expression is transmitted as a pattern to the next generation. To produce next generation plants patterned for desired traits, Mackenzie's team has devised an ingenious but simple method. First, a plant like this canola is epigenetically reprogrammed to behave as if it's experiencing extreme environmental stress. That plant is then turned into a rootstock by trimming off flowering branches. A cutting is taken from the wild variety of the same kind of plant. This cutting, called a scion, is then grafted onto the distressed rootstock, forming a hybrid. Mackenzie has discovered through careful field testing that the seeds produced by these hybridized plants are significantly more resilient and productive than wild type versions of the plant. And this holds true not just for canola, but for every species of plant Mackenzie's team has tested to date. We have been able to manipulate epigenetics in several plant species. So for instance, in tomato, you can see 30% increases in yield just as a consequence of epigenetic manipulation. In sorghum, we've seen you know 30% increases in yield. In resilience, we see 68% uh, resilience to low nitrogen conditions, those you might find in certain African marginal land conditions. To achieve these remarkable adaptations, Mackenzie's team has closely studied epigenetic processes naturally occurring in plants at the cellular level. So we learned the lessons, the language of epigenetics in order to program plants so that they will be producing seed that are better adapted to an environment. When a plant receives outside stressors, such as heat or drought, it issues a stress response. Organelles within the cell, called sensory plastids, detect a change in the environment. They then transform these environmental stimuli into chemical signals to alert the cell to the change. In the cell's nucleus, epigenetic modifiers, such as methyl and acetyl groups, respond by rearranging their positions, altering the expression of the cell's DNA. These alterations produce different downstream products that shape the way the plant will grow in response to the environmental stress. Some rearrangements result in slower growth, prompted by a plant's decision to hunker down and conserve its resources. It's the plants exhibiting this kind of response that Mackenzie's group grafts to wild-type scions in order to generate more resilient and productive seeds. These seeds then grow into more resilient and productive plants. The epigenetically modified seeds produced through this process hold enormous potential to benefit the agricultural industry. We started a small company called EpiCrop Technologies Incorporated and EpiCrop becomes the commercial arm, essentially, of my lab insofar as my lab continues to do research. But as we have another breakthrough, we can hand it off to EpiCrop and they can then pursue, is there commercial potential for this? Would this actually be something that growers could use, that companies could benefit from? And the implications of Mackenzie's research aren't just limited to agriculture, because plants aren't the only ones who have to adapt to environmental stressors. Human beings do too. I just told you about a plant and its environment, but everything I told you 
happens to you as well. It happens to humans, it happens to animals, it happens in every context. So that means that for all the agricultural value we get from decoding this language, there is a concomitant biomedical advantage for early diagnostics. Through a novel method of computational biology that Mackenzie's team has dubbed methyl IT, she and her colleagues are now able to read an individual's methylome profile. This provides a window into epigenetic activity that never existed before. So I think there's a new era that opens up, right? A, a combined genomics and epigenomics uh, you know, continuum that allows a company, or biomedically speaking, a doctor to know precisely what a condition is because you're now looking at every aspect of what chromatin is likely to do during the development of an organism. We never had that power before, so it, it feels to me like a, you know, like a, a, the advent of a, of a new age, if you will, of, of decoding our genetic and epigenetic information. To follow Sally McKenzie's groundbreaking research, visit sites.psu.edu slash McKenzie Lab.